All right. Whoa. So one thing that, that we talked about in the previous recording, I want to bring it up here just so people have the opinions. I can't help but wonder, there, there's always been kind of a rumor uh, going around that when Miyamoto designed this, we know the, the basic premise of the story, but a lot of his stuff is based off of Arthurian lore. Um, and so at that point, I can't help but wonder the fact that the King of Hyrule, Zelda, and even a few other people who look like they're Hylian all speak with a British accent. Mm -hmm. I can't help but wonder if it, if they're actually kind of feeding into the assumption that it's all based off of Arthurian lore. What what did you think about that theory, Alex? It makes sense. There's it, you know, it's got that whole Excalibur sword in the stone kind of vibe to it. Yeah, it, like the Master Sword pretty much is Excalibur. Yeah. So, uh, I love the idea of it. Um, it, it's it's kind of hard to make those comparisons because. I mean, sure, like how the the first question that people would ask is like, how does how does Ganon fit into it? Uh, because you know, Ganon would have to be like uh, an evil Morgana or Morgan Le Fay or something to that extent or Mordred. Mm -hmm. But it, I think at least in the premise of Link uh, and Zelda, they were going for more of an Arthurian concept, uh, and this game kind of confirms it. High rule kingdom. Oh, oh, please don't kill yourself. <laughs> I'm pretty please, sure this Please don't kill yourself. This one's inactive. Outpost ruins. I always worry about going into the main Hyrule ruins area because you, you never know when you're going to come across. An actual one uh -huh. that's out. Well, that's the castle town ruins where you got to worry more about this. Oh, man. So back into the the Breath of the Wild sequel, yeah. uh, I was bringing up this question with with Alex. I'm going to bring it up with you, Andrea. So there's there's been a little bit of online discussion over Zelda's look in in the new trailer, specifically that it looks like she has shorter hair. Um, and so the internet is basically like fifty fifty divided with this. Do you like the new look for Zelda, or do you not like it? I personally wouldn't care what what her hair looked like. I think, in all honesty, the shorter hair works for the character that she is. And and because here's the thing, guys. Spoiler alert: every Zelda is different. All right. I know that that some of them hold on to more maiden traits than others, but every Zelda is different to some extent. Hence, why we have all the jokes of like how Zelda would respond to like Link saying "I love you," yeah. because all of them would respond differently. And in this case, I, I like the idea that Zelda is more the calm, scientific type. Hence why I think the shorter hair works. Um, that's my opinion, though. I, I, I don't have any issue with it, but I have seen a lot of people saying, like, I do not like the fact that it, it should always be uh, a long-haired Zelda. Also, the other thing that I've been seeing a lot of discussion on is the white dress that she wears throughout the game and whether or not she should be going for the Maiden-esque look when she's supposed to be, like, the scientist. I personally don't mind it. I, I do think that it feels very odd, but it's supposed to. Kind of deal. Like, am I wrong in that, Alex? Uh, I think you're right. Um, it feels odd just because that's not who Zelda is in this in this game. <clears throat> And like I was telling you, like, I, I actually really hope that <clears throat> in Breath of the Wild 2, we just, we learn so much about the Hyrule that we're in right now. Yeah. Um, that we learn about, like, we have a proper origin story for Ganondorf. We have a proper story about, like, what things were like 100 years ago. In fact, here's the thing. I want to, I want a Breath of the Wild 0. Honestly, I do. Yeah, I, I want something 100 years ago when they were trying to unearth all this stuff. Hmm. Because some some point, like, I don't know if you've had this issue or not, but when, when looking at the other cutscenes, I kind of get a feeling of like, and then and then humanity grew too full of itself. And that's when Ganon took over. And that's when Ganon used, like, used um, everyone's comforts against them by, by turning the Guardians against them. Kind of thing. Mm. And am I wrong in that? I, I never thought about it like that. Really, I, I kind of want to see if if that's a story that they would go with. I'm just 
I'm just more wanting to see like a restored Hyrule now that we've essentially for now returned peace before you know the mysterious forces of evil rise again you know considering this world is very mm. you know kind of barren and apocalyptic <clears throat> yeah that's that's actually the one thing that I've been so for those who aren't aware of this I technically even though I've done a review on this game I have never finished it um and that's actually one thing I've been told that I probably wouldn't like is the ending because it is kind of in a post-apocalyptic world where yeah sure you save the day but everybody's dead not everybody's kind of dead thing. I wouldn't it's not that kind of an ending it's not like a downer ending it's I it's just more like well but the champions are, are gone yeah but again we've defeated Calamity Ganon and the day is essentially saved but there's still much work to do to restore Hyrule to its former glory. Mm -hmm. Which to me sounds like a Skyward Sword ending, but we'll, we'll see when I actually get there. I mean, for crying out loud, we just barely did the last Divine Beast. So now I can say I've seen all the champions. Um, and, and as to Alex's question, do I like or dislike uh, Urbo <sighs> Urbosa's voice? This is gonna sound really bad, but I, yeah. I'm not intending for it to be. I like all the champions. Yeah, they're in nice. all honesty. Oh. Am I am I going to say that they're all doing Oscar-winning performances? Probably not. But I think part of the reason that I would say that is because, well, Nintendo held everything so close to the vest. Yeah. That's just the nature. Like, of if the actors actually knew who they were playing, they probably could have invested more effort. And yeah. instead, they had to play it on the fly. Yeah. It's just, it's the nature of things like this. You work on high profile projects. Yeah. You're not always going to get a lot of information. But here's the thing is that now they've played the games, Nintendo doesn't have to keep secrets with them. They, they'll probably still have them sign like NDAs. Yeah. So don't discuss the game, but now they can play other characters. Cause you know, if this is going to be based like as a sequel to breath of the wild, then I mean, what do we think the chances are? We won't see the champions again. Yeah. We probably will. Because they, they'll, they'll probably have to be some kind of element that we have to rely on. Smack that thing, Alex. We got an amber. So now yes. we can revive the dinosaurs. You can, in fact. Well, actually, no, you can't because you don't have... You have to use the first bit of amber for your cane. That's true. And then you can do that. Also, you have to work on your Scottish accent. Yeah. Blow me bug pipes! <laughs> Done! Alright, into the Boshkala Shrine. So the, uh, the other elephant in the room that we need to take care of from the Nintendo press, uh, press conference... There's a lot of elephants, aren't there? Th there are actually a lot of elephants because it's E3. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to give the floor to you guys. Banjo-Kazooie in Smash. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I have yet to play the new Smash because uh, I really just don't have anyone to play with, unfortunately. And I don't have the online stuff yet. You might have to get it at some point, though, because we we are getting we are getting a bit of a, a demand that we we do another Smash night because somebody needs to to dethrone Romney. But you can play it by yourself, Alex. I know, but it's it's a beat 'em up. It's more fun. It's like a racing game. Sure, you can play it by yourself, but it's more fun to have somebody to actually play with. This is true. True. But, I mean, we, we will eventually need to get you a copy so that we can do uh, a Smash Night and and somebody has the chance to obliterate Romney. I don't know how likely that chance is, but it's possible. But Ooh. I'm excited that Banjo finally got to make the lineup, you know? I found it funny that they, in the trailer... Because you haven't seen the trailer, right, Alex? Right. So they made fun of the K rule reveal and had the exact same thing play out, but then it was instead of um, King DDD and then K rule came out, it was Duck Hunt Dog and then Banjo Kazooie came out. Kind of thing. So that was really yeah. cool to be able to see. Um, I, I was like, at first, I was like, what? Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? They had to pull that move. But then I, I like the fact that. that um, the banjo was a cool reveal. Um, I like the fact that they're finally giving the fans what they legit want. Xenoblade Chronicles Two. But I I will say this. Um, 
it's not as powerful uh, an entry for me as it is to say Alex and Andrea. And I think part of that is just because you guys grew up with Banjo-Kazooie. I didn't. Yeah. So it's not, it's a cool reveal, but to me it's just like, oh, okay. You know? <laughs> well, even then. I, I hate to give you the M. Bison reaction, but to me it was Tuesday. <laughs> um, I may be somewhat used to seeing bad omens by now, but that, well, that's just better than most. Hmm. We're doomed. I mean, don't panic. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I need to give this guy now. I mean, we're doomed. Uh, don't panic. Sorry. Sorry. Who are you? Uh, have you noticed that the, the water's turning the frickin' frogs, guy? Have we met? Well, doesn't matter who you are, really. I was getting tired of talking to myself, so you've come at a good time. I'm not crazy. I promise. By the by, the by those strange things that popped out of the ground, did you see them? Did you see them? I'm not seeing things. I'm not talking about mushrooms here. I'm talking about those towers. They seem to have popped up all over the place. You can see them, right? <laughs> They're turning the freaking frogs gay. Can you understand that? Uh, yeah, we, we don't care. <laughs> just don't, but, Jesus. I, I think I went to Alex Jones on that. Yeah. Just a little bit. Okay, cool. What thing? <laughs> see, part of me is expecting Alex to just be a dick in these dialogues. Just an absolute dick. Goodbye. Be careful. Wait a minute. Please think about what you're doing. Oh, is he <laughs> That's the feeling I get when I look at your face, but maybe I'm nuts. Ah. You're fine. Just don't be so careless. I'm the main protagonist of this game. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. I'd be, I'd be safe well, to say that everything could go wrong. Campfire um, if you want to camp out during the night. Yes. Or you could take that campfire that you can actually cook on. See, one of the things that makes going through these Bacoblin camps so much easier is having, like, a polearm. Having some kind of a spear. Just so that then you can, you can trounce everybody. Yeah. At, from a distance, might I add. No, your traveler spirit's badly damaged. Darn it. <laughs> your spear broke. I know, I was trying to break it on him. Let's see. Better put a better eat some apple. Apples and bananas. I don't have any bananas yet. That'll be later. Yeah, I was gonna say, why, why are you trying to get some bananas? You haven't unlocked the best place to get the bananas. Woo! Flurry rush! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. See, I'm much better at doing the flurry rush than I am about the parry. Yeah. The parry is hard to me. Spiked Boko Club. Let's keep. Let's take their stuff. Opal. So let's see. We, we've covered. We've covered. Banjo. Yeah. Um, we've covered. I'd be more excited Breath if it was wild. an actual banjo. If it was banjo coming to switch. Oops. But no. I I think you're gonna get that though, just because you're gonna get um, Xbox Game Pass is coming. So that means that that things like the the With, rare collection will be here and. Without having to sign up for yet another thing to subscribe to for a nineteen ninety nine a month. Hmm. Uh, that might be the price you have to pay because that's what Xbox wants. I don't know. This, this is one of the things where I think people are, I, I think people have a right to be happy that Xbox is doing all this with Nintendo and that's great. But you also have to realize that they, they have to do this from their own, from their own perspective. They have to make sure that people are still fans of Xbox while playing on Nintendo. I know that people don't like that, and, um, you know, you and I, Alex, have had our own talks about exclusivity, but the bottom line is, is that exclusivity is going to be a thing. Because they have to have, it. you know, Microsoft's a business just like Nintendo is. They have to give you a reason to go play on Xbox. Yeah, but, I mean, Sanjo's an old game. Come on. Just give it to me already. Like, I'm not asking, not like I'm asking for Halo here. To be on Switch. Yes, but I would I would also argue that 
that Banjo is probably just as highly demanded as Halo. And that's where that's where the problem lies, is that they know that it's that antici or that it's that much wanted on a Nintendo console. So why not help hold Nintendo over a barrel and say like, okay, you want you want to be able to get this? That's fine. We we have no problem giving it to you, but you gotta pay us a royalty because we we have rare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're right. and you're wasting them, and you wasted you wasted rare, just like you're wasting Team Ninja now. Team, uh, you mean Ninja Theory? I mean, yeah, Ninja Theory. Yeah, because uh, as different. we said off in Brave Friends of Musashi, it is confirmed Ninja Theory's newest game is an Overwatch clone. Jeez, uh, run away! I hate these fuckers. Damn right. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree. I really wish that they hadn't they hadn't done that with with uh, Ninja Theory, but that's what they wanted to do. Should have figured. It's like I knew it. It's like, oh great, Microsoft's got them. White, watch them waste them, like they did with Rare. Which is really sad because, like, I didn't even realize this, but there are a lot of Ninja Theory games that I really do like, and a lot of those games are made under the premise of. Don't try to tell um, Ninja Theory what to do, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, don't mess with them. Just let them do their creative process. And it looks like this is an Xbox decision, not necessarily a Ninja Theory decision. Yeah, of course. If it that's is. if it, it, and and before people jump down my, our, our throats, if that's not the case, if this was something they wanted to do, then that's a sad state. Like this is what they wanted to do. Okay, fine. I'll accept it, but I'm not going to agree with it. Because I, I do know that there's occasionally going to be that one person like, well, they, they volunteered to do this. Okay, fine. I don't agree with it. I think they should have stuck with what they know best. I will say this, though. There, there was tons of stuff in that Nintendo... Uh, the Nintendo Direct for E3 that like I'm I'm very excited for. Um, there was about like two or three games that I wasn't really into. And that's that's saying something, guys. Like this year at E3, I'm very happy that I actually didn't watch a lot of the press conferences. Because I would have been bored. Was it Sony that won last year? Or? Oh, Sony won wholeheartedly. Oh, because yeah. they had they had Resident Evil 2 remake. True. And a few other titles that people were anticipating. All of which, by the way, I have a, f a sneaking feeling that they will all be PS5 titles. Well, they'll probably be cross-gen at this point. Uh, yeah, at, at the very least. But we've already kind of... Actually, no. There, there's one that we can say is not, and we are incorrect on it. Because Last of Us 2 just got confirmed as a, a PS5 launch title. And it will not be coming to PS4. Oh. So... Come here! Yes! If people are, are going to be mad about it, I don't know what to tell you. That's what Sony wants to do. Kind of like with Microsoft and making the next Halo game uh, exclusive to Project Scarlet. In case you... Did, did you know about that, Alex? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Project more... Scarlet is the new Xbox. Yeah. And... I think we've known that for a little while. It's the code name Scarlet. It's going to be the next Xbox. We speculated on it. We, we didn't get confirmation on it yet. But, but Xbox did. Or Xbox confirmed it oh, here. It's there. So, for all the people who are screaming out, no, the next thing is going to be called the Xbox Scarlet. No, that's not how it works, people. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a code name, guys. It's a code name. Just like the NX was the code name for Switch. Dolphin for GameCube, Ultra 64 for N64, Revolution for the Wii. Like, these are all project names. This little leaf just doesn't want to give you a break. It really doesn't. I well, did you over. like it when we were getting that leaf? That kind of like the same similar thing when we were on the mountainside or something? <coughs> we were crawling to uh, follow it? Most of the Koroks are fairly annoying in my opinion. Like all of their their quests to get them. <laughs> they're a little... Why are you... They're a touch annoying. You know what? what the heck? Let's get some fire jelly. Red choo-choo jelly. Yes, because you can do that. Yeah. Um, 